Hi there and welcome to tutorial 9 which is on Prim's algorithm and this is uh, in the graph theory section of the Edexcel Decision 1 Maths course for A-level. As before it's applicable to most decision or discrete maths modules. For more help with your maths studies, GCSE or A-level, see my YouTube channel or my website. OK, let's start by taking a look at the Edexcel specification and seeing what they say we need to know. In greens, what we already know. OK, how to represent a graph using a matrix and how to do Kruskal's algorithm. In this session here, we're going to learn about Prim's algorithm, OK, for the minimum spanning tree problem. And also, um, we're going to recover the matrix representation for Prim's algorithm. We're going to show how writing um, a graph in matrix form can help us perform Prim's algorithm. OK, so let's get straight on to a reminder of what the problem is. I've gone through this in the Kruskal's video, but it's worth just going over again. A spanning tree is a subgraph of a, of a graph G. So here's a graph G, OK, that that connects all of its vertices and does not have a, um, a cycle in it, OK? So uh, a spanning tree is a tree and so that all the vertices of the graph are connected, OK? And it's a subgraph. So here's an example of a spanning tree and here's another example of a spanning tree. Again, something like this would not be a spanning tree because it's got a cycle in it, so it's not a tree, even though it is connected. And also, you know, something also like, say, that would not be a spanning tree uh, because it's not all connected. E is not connected to the rest, OK? So um, that's what a spanning tree is all about. And remember, a graph with n vertices, OK, for any spanning tree of that, it must have n minus 1 edges or arcs. Right, as we did before, what, what's a minimal spanning tree? Well, if you've got a network that's a weighted graph, the minimal spanning tree is a tree that has the least weight. So the minimum connector problem, as, as it's called in the specification, is to find the tree of a network with least weight. By doing that, we found a way of connecting all the um, vertices or nodes with the least possible associated weight. So here's our original graph. That's certainly a spanning tree, OK? And if you add up the uh, weights, 6 and 5 is 11, add 8 is 19, add 7 is 26, OK? So you get 26. Is that least? Can we do better? Well, here's another spanning tree for us, OK? It's certainly a tree because everything's connected and there's no cycles. This is 2 and 8, 2 and 6 is 8, add 5 is 13, add 9. It's 22, so that's better than before. Is that of least weight? Can we do better? Uh, and this one here, let's have a look at this one here. Um, this is certainly a spanning tree um, because it's a tree. It's all connected up, but there's no cycle. 7 and 8 is 15, add 4 is 19, add 5 is is 24. Okay, so um, the, what, the one that we did in the middle was the one we found was the smallest. Is it guaranteed to be the absolute minimum? Okay, well, we don't know. We've got Kruskal's algorithm, which helps us work out the minimum spanning tree. And in this video, we're going to learn another algorithm, namely Prim's algorithm. And again, it finds for us the minimum spanning tree. Right, there's the example, as we did before. And here's the new algorithm. I suggest you copy down Prim's algorithm. Now, this one uh, is, uh, you can only really do it by drawing it out. The step one says, choose any vertex or node to start and let that be the first vertex of T. Okay, so why don't I start off at A, for example. I'm going to start here at A. That's my first vertex of T. So T currently comprises of A. Then step two says that we must consider which arcs from the vertices in T connect to those outside T. The only thing in T currently is vertex A. Consider all the arcs that connect from A to outside A. Now let's draw a little line in. That's that arc, that arc, that arc, 
or that arc we're to consider. And it says pick the one of smallest weight. If there are more than one, choose at random. The one of smallest weight is this one here. This two, okay. So I'm going to include this, okay, in my spanning tree, and I'm going to include E as part of it, okay. So T has AE as an edge or an arc, and it has weight two. Okay, now what do we do? Well, we go back. That should be step two, and we consider which arcs from T. Uh, connect to outside T. Now, T has two vertices in it. Now. It's got these one, A, but now it's got E, which has arcs coming out of it, connecting to outside of T. Which out of 7, 4, 6, 8, 4 and 6 is smallest? Well, one of the 4s are, there are two of them, and the algorithm tell us to, tells us to choose at random. So I'm going to choose that 4, and I'm going to include this arc here, EC, into my minimal spanning tree. So now I'm going to have an EC in there as well, and that's got weight of 4. Okay? Now I go back to step 2 again. Now a key line here that maybe we didn't talk about in a lot of detail before, consider which arcs from the vertices in T connect to those outside T. Let's just think about this at this stage. Now, from here, that connects to outside T, because B is not in the spanning tree. This one does no longer connect to outside, because A connects to C, but C is in our tree. So we ignore that one. Okay, A connects to D, that's fine. What about for me? E connects to B, that would be fine. Okay, E connects to D, that would be fine. What about from C? C connects to D, that would be fine. C connects to B, that would be fine. But C connects to A, that wouldn't be fine. Okay, because it would be going back to A, which is in the tree. So we only want to consider those that would connect to outside the tree. Right, what's smallest out of 6? 8, 6, 7, 9, and 5. Well, clearly 5 is. Okay, so I'm going to include that in my spanning tree. I'm going to include BC in my spanning tree as well. So BC of weight 5 is going to be in my spanning tree. And then I go back to step two because all the vertices haven't been connected. D is still not connected. Okay. Now I consider everything, uh, every arc that would connect from T to outside. Now this one wouldn't because A would connect to B uh, and that would be inside the tr uh, the spanning tree. Um, this one would be fine. E and B, that wouldn't be fine because E would connect B, which is already in the tree. E to D would be fine. Uh, D to C would be absolutely fine. And B to D would be fine. Okay, what smaller out of 8, 8, 7 and 9? Well, the 7 is. So I'm going to include the ED in my spanning tree. So the last thing I include is ED, which has weight 7. Okay, so the total weight... of the minimum spanning tree, T is 2 and 4 is 6, add 5 is 11, add 7 is 18, and that's as we got when we did it for Kruskal's algorithm as well. So it's a nice, easy um, way to uh, work through. It's a nice, easy method to work through. It's different to uh, Kruskal's. It's particularly more useful when there are a larger number of um, vertices, okay, because we can convert it to a matrix form, which is what we're going to try next. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to do this very same algorithm, but in matrix form, okay? So this is the question we did previously, and we're going to convert it to a matrix. Now, you should have watched my video on how to convert this to a distance matrix, so pause the video and convert that to a matrix, and then I'll go through how to do that and check you've done it right. Okay, and you should have been able to draw this uh, distance matrix here, and mine looked like something like that. Okay, so just mark off and check you've got that right. Now let's go through the algorithm. Okay, it says choose any vertex or node to be uh, your start and uh, your first uh, vertex in T. So I'm going to choose A. Okay. It says number the column of the new vertex in the top row 
So I'm going to number that number one. Then it says delete the row of the matrix corresponding to this, so delete row A. Then it says step three find the smallest weight left in the undeleted columns of nodes of T. The only node in T is A, so this is the only column I'm interested in, the columns I've numbered, I've only numbered one of them, and circle the smallest, which is the two. That tells us that AE of two is in um, my spanning tree. I Over here in the picture, AE of two is in my spanning tree. Okay? And it says the circled vertex becomes uh, the next vertex of the tree. And it says go back to step two. Here, label and number the new vertex in the top row. So I'm going to label E number two. Okay, And it says delete the row corresponding to this. So delete row E apart from the thing you've circled. Then it says... Okay, find the, the smallest weight left in the columns you've numbered or in the columns of your spanning tree. Okay, so what's smaller at 6, 4 and 8 and 6, 4 and 7? Well, 4 is, there are two of them. Take any one. Okay, so the next entry is going to be EC, which is of weight 4. On the picture, it would be EC, which is of weight 4. Okay, and then it says, um, now number that. Uh, number the C, number 3, and delete everything in the C row, as so. Okay, now it says look down the columns you've numbered, they're the items in your spanning tree, A, C and E, find the smallest. Smallest out of 6, 8, 8, 5, 9, 6 and 7, well 5 is. So B, C is the next thing in your tree, B, C, okay, and it's of weight 5. So on the picture, BC of weight 5 is now in your tree. And so now number column B 4, okay, and delete everything in column B apart from the thing you've circled. Now look down your tree in the things you uh, numbered and find the smallest out of 8, 8, 9 uh, and 7. Well, 7 is clearly the smallest. So DE is the last thing in your tree, DE of 7 is the last thing in your tree, so that's number 5, and cross off uh, that row. And now everything's, all the rows are deleted, so you stop. So, here's your spanning tree, uh, DE was the last thing to include, this was the 7 here, okay, and if you add that up, 2 and 4 is 6, 6 and 5 is 11, and 11 and 7 is 18, so the minimal spanning tree has weight 18 as we found previously. And we're done. So my suggestion for you is do practice getting um, your graph into uh, a distance ta uh, table or matrix, but then practice this algorithm. Write down at each stage what arc has been included, and if possible, draw it on a graph associated as well. It just makes your life a whole lot easier when you're working through these. Okay, I've got a set of questions for you now. The first two questions are for you to use Prim's algorithm, okay, in the first normal way, okay, the first way I've shown you Prim's, and the next question is to show you how to, uh, to do two examples of using Prim's with a table. Okay, as always, pause the video, in 10 seconds I'll show you the answers. So here we go, here are the first two questions using normal Prim's without a matrix. Okay, and the answers for these were as follows. The first one I got a minimal spanning tree of 34 and these were the arcs. And for the second one I got a minimal spanning tree of 54 and these were my arcs. That was using prims in the normal way. And the next one, pause the video. This is for prims with a table. In 10 seconds I'll show you the answer. And here's a, a, the answers to these two. So hopefully you got that. I got here are the arcs and here is the total length. And I got here are the arcs and here was the total length. Okay, and now you've practiced how to use prims 
both the normal way and using a matrix method. Finally, um, for further work and homework, okay, read chapter 3, page 45 to 50 in your Decision 1 book and work through those examples. There's a good example in there on uh, prims with a matrix, uh, but on a network, okay, so you need to know how to do those as well. And do exercise 3B at page 46, all the questions, and then move on to exercise 3C, page 50, questions 1 and 2. Last thing, do the past paper questions 9 video where I go through the Edexcel exam questions that have come up on Prim's algorithm. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful in your study of Decision 1.